All right, so uh, we're going to talk today about um, removing your clutches from your machine and just kind of getting them into a serviceable position. Uh, this is our shop car. It's a 2021. It's got a, um, the old style QRS clutch on it. Uh, and we're just going to go over some of the basics on how to remove it. Um, We've got some tools here that we're going to be using. So we've got a half inch impact, three eighths, quarter inch ratchet, a small screwdriver, large screwdriver, 18 mil, eight mil. This is kind of optional, um, but it's a 12 mil. It's a little helpful for installing this tool. Um, and then we have the uh, belt removal tool and a couple various sockets here, torque wrench, uh, and then some cleaning supplies for the clutches as well. So the reason we remove these end links, it just makes it a little bit easier to get to the clutch cover. Um, I removed that first, but you do need to remove that at some point to uh, get to your primary bolt. the belt off of here first of all so I got this neat little tool from uh, KWI for that um, it's easiest to remove the secondary when you're in park or neutral uh, and then when you go to reinstall it put the machine in gear and it makes it a little bit easier to find those splines and get them lined up because sometimes that can be a pain so we're gonna just go ahead and thread this in And when you pull your belt off, um, you know, it's always a good idea to check it out, even if it's pretty new. Um, this one is an Ultimax. It's seen a couple of pulls on the dyno, uh, but it doesn't have any cords pulled. And um, it's not shiny or anything like that. So. And this bolt for the secondary is going to be a 17 millimeter. So this clutch is floated, um, which basically means it's spring loaded here so it can move in and out with the belt. Uh, keeps temperatures down and makes the belts last a little bit longer, that sort of thing. So a little bit different than your stock machine, but basically this is a factory secondary bolt, and that's all you're going to pull out if you don't have the float mod. The secondary just comes off like this, and uh, we'll look at that a little bit closer later. It's easier to get this out of the way uh, when you're pulling the primary off because it's kind of difficult to pull it out this way. So I like to pull it off and then bring it out the back. So the primary bolt is a 22 millimeter. Um, you can use, you know, we've got half inch or three eighths. But just hit that and then there's two sets of threads. So once you get it out of the first set, it's free. Then we're gonna just kind of get those other threads started by hand, just so you don't cross thread it while you're backing it out. Puller's gonna be a 19 mil. I like to use a half inch for this. So this one came off pretty easily. Um, it's been on and off a lot, so it's not really uh, stuck on there. 
but now that our primary is loose, we can just pull it off. Uh, this is a full service kit from KWI. Just kind of go over what comes in the kit. So, this first bag here, we have our uh, buttons that the slider is kind of guided by. Uh, and then we have these little rollers which the arms actually ride on. Um, these rollers, I, I don't usually see them go bad um, super often. Um, when they do, it kind of wreaks havoc throughout the whole situation to the point where you kind of replace the clutch anyways, but we'll kind of go over uh, some of this stuff. And then we have these, uh, there's two of them in here, these nylon washers um, for the primary bearing itself. We've got a roller kit. Uh, these are the, the big rollers for the secondary. We've got a primary bearing here. And a couple goodies from KWI as well. And some instructions. So, first thing I'm going to do is split this primary. So we'll take our puller, put it back in here, and I'll usually thread it into about where this this uh, step down is, I guess, in the puller. Basically, so that that's just barely not visible, and that gives you enough room with this tool. So then we'll put this tool on here. don't have to be super tight. So then for this part, I like to use a half inch impact. Most of the three eighths can't do it. But this is a 24. And we're just gonna send it in there and kinda put your hand here and just hold on to it because it is gonna sort of pop a little bit. Just take that back out. So we can just compare these new pieces to the ones that are in the clutch already. Um, these look to be in pretty good shape here. There is always going to be a little bit of wear on the, uh, the bottom washer. It's like a little step that gets created there just from um, the the height difference, I guess, between the post and the inner sheave. So sometimes these will, these mostly get worn more than the outer one, I would say. Sometimes they break. Um, but so we'll actually re replace that one. Just go ahead and put that back on there, the new one. And then we'll take a look at the bearing. Uh, this is a new one. It already comes pre-greased. Uh, you don't want to put a lot of grease on this because obviously if it gets out, it's going to get on your sheaves. So I just leave them with the amount of grease that they come with. That's plenty. And then this is our old one. So it actually, you can see it's a little bit burned here. Um, 
that is on the inner sheave side and this is super common uh, it there, there's just a lot of heat there um, but if you shake it you can hear that the cage is still good um, it's not like worn out super bad um, a lot of times you know even when you have the clutch back together you can stick your hand in here and kind of wiggle that bearing around and you'll feel a lot of play um, and it can cause other you know drivability issues and stuff like that so we just check that compared to a new one here that doesn't have any of those burn marks on it and sometimes these little seals can actually get messed up on the inside um, but obviously this is new so we're gonna clean that off a little bit before we put it on check out the uh, spider here. This just kind of wheels out. And this will not come off with the clutch in one piece um, because there's a taper on the inside of this and it actually locks onto the post here. So, but we'll take this off and just kind of check everything out. Um, these buttons I actually replaced pretty recently so they look Pretty new, they have a couple little, very small marks on them, but that's no big deal. And then we have our removable buttons here. They have the O-rings in them. Those kind of just take up the slack in the situation. So you also have these that the clutch arms actually ride on as the clutch is shifting. Um, these are all in really good condition. It's pretty uncommon that these will go bad, I would say. But uh, just kind of look at them, make sure they spin freely. Um, and then the other thing you can look at too while you have this apart is these uh, plates here. So they do wear out. The older models, uh, like the 17 models, all came with um, the outer half did not have these steel sliders. It was just all aluminum. So once the aluminum wore out, the clutch was basically done. Uh, these are replaceable. Um, we keep them in stock and you can see there's a little bit of wear, but it's nothing too serious. So we'll just leave those alone. And those are not included in the kit. That's kind of a separate thing. We just pulled one of these out. Basically, you're gonna just hit the outside of this with a little bit of heat. Um, and then you can use, I don't know, probably probably a, a socket with maybe like a rag over it or something like that. But we had this nice little nylon piece sitting around. Um, but we just kind of put it right there. Uh, after we put some heat in it and a little quarter inch punch and these just come right out. So it's just a little dowel pin. Um, and then there's your, your roller. back on. I'm just going to make sure that the taper 
is clean on the crank here. So this is brake clean. Check the threads on your bolts too. Um, we like to use the KWI primary bolt. Whenever we're taking the stock one off, um, we've seen them break, the stock ones break before, and it's a really good insurance policy to have this bolt. Let's stick this in here. This is our puller from earlier. And it goes underneath the sway bar, like that. So if you have to turn the engine over a little bit, that's why I impacted this bolt on, so I can turn the engine over by hand if I need to. And for this bolt, we're gonna set our torque wrench. So before we put the secondary back on, I'm just gonna show you guys how to make adjustments um, to your clutch arms without actually taking the clutch off. Here, so take that stud. So then that allows us to basically just open the whole clutch up so you can get to any of these arms easily. Just slide this pin out. And when you do this, make sure that you don't lose your washers that are on either side of the arm here. See how I just kind of pinched them together so they don't fall out. Uh, and then from here, we can um, make any of our adjustments that we need to do. Um, just make sure that whatever you do to one side, do the same thing to the other side. Keep the whole clutch symmetrical. Um, and then once you're done making your adjustments, Put that back in there. Make sure it's not too tight. That looks good. So the easiest way to get these back on is to put your machine in gear, high or low, and then that shaft will be locked. So this being a full float does have that spring in the back there. So if that's what you have, just make sure the spring's on there. There we go. The same process as before. And make sure you put your belt on the same orientation that it was when you took it off. I always install them so that the 
letters are facing you. That's it.